Welcome back everybody, Mudford here. This is my son Jeremiah's LT80. This is a 1987 four-wheeler, so it's 30 years old. And it's still in pretty good working condition. He just got it this summer from a co-worker. Thanks, Corey. And he decided he wants to race it at the local fair in the motocross. He's 10 years old, so with the 80cc two-stroke, he can race in the 80 and under cc two-stroke or up to 110, which is what that quad is, graces, four-stroke class. But it needs to be stock. And when I called and asked on the rules of it, I asked if I could put wheel spacers in to get the front wheels out a little wider. Let me show you that real quick. So if you look, it's a pretty narrow front end, not very stable. So here is Grace's quad. You can see the difference. It's a much wider front end. Of course, when they told me it had to be showroom stock, I take that as a challenge. This is a 30-year-old quad. He's going to be racing against brand new quads. So how can you have a showroom stock 30-year-old quad? So the first thing I'm doing is replacing the chain. There's a lot better chains out there now for them. And I'm also replacing the spot sprockets. The, so this one is a little bit different gearing. It gives it more top end. And I also got this spring tensioner from Midwest Mini. This whole kit came from them. So I'm going to put that on. So this is your bolt hole where your cover was. Same as up, up there. So this is going to bolt there. Spring's going to bolt there. Now they say you can't use the cover with this, but I kind of want to use the cover because I don't want them to see this. Not that it's really a performance modification. All it's doing is keeping the chain tight. We're going to go ahead and get this mounted, and then we're going to modify the cover so hopefully it'll fit on. So here is the bolt that came with it. I put some Loctite on it. I don't like it. Oh crooked the thing is. Go ahead. I had to drill that hole and tap it, which was a pain in the butt because mine bolt was broken that was in there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. This is my metric uh, crescent wrench here. came with these nylon washers here. I'm supposed to put one on. Then the tensioner. Then the other one. And then the keeper. So there's the tensioner. So this modification is going to give it a little bit more top end because of the sprocket difference. And this is going to keep the chain tight. So what I did was the bolt normally goes through there from this side in. And it holds this cover on. What I did is I put a longer bolt in from the back and threaded it through. And then put a nut on to space the spring out. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on. And I also drilled the bottom hole out to fit over this peg for the tensioner a little bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and slip it on and we'll see how it looks. So we're going to tighten the nut down there and bolt it in the back and I think it'll be fine. Okay, now that I got the chain back on and the cover back on, we're going to focus on the back wheels. These are 30 years old. These are probably the original tires. There's not much left of the knobs on them. We got these ones. They're just a hair smaller. 
DWT, they're 18 by 7 eighths instead of 19 by 7 eighths, but they're a much flatter, square tire, which is hopefully going to be better for racing. So we're going to go ahead and get those on the rims. And then I've already got the side cover off because you want to make sure you have a good belt, of course, and I could feel kind of a feathered edge on this. You can, you can see the edges wore a little bit. So, of course, a new belt will help. And then, since I have the belt off, you have to take this whole cover off here. There's the side cover. It's right here. To get the belt off, you have to take the foot pegs loose. There's a 15 millimeter nut there to take the clutch, front clutch off. Another one on the back here, and then there's also a bigger one. I'm not even sure what size it is. Well, I got an inch and a quarter to fit on it. And that is left handed threads. Just take this apart just to look it over. Clean it up if necessary. But what we're going to focus on are the rollers and the clutch. So there's six of them. We're going to take them out. So we've done a few performance mods. So now what we're going to do is take the uh, a couple of the rollers out and see how it runs. And see if, it's, if I like it better or if he likes it better. Or we, I've also heard of pulling the metal sleeves out of these rollers and drilling holes in them to lighten them. And, but we're just going to try running with only four. And we'll see how it works. So I just pulled this boot off that goes from the air breather down to the carburetor. It just has a Phillips screw on a clamp in there and there. Take them loose and pull it right out and then you can get to the carburetor. Which is, I believe, a 5 millimeter is what I have. You have one in there, you can feed it right through. Yeah, then you have to just get something on this end to get it broke loose. In order to get the carburetor out, you got to get those two Allen head screws. The one that's hard to get to, you don't even have to take all the way out. Because it's not straight there. So I just loosen that. Um, you're going to pull off your fuel inlet line, your vacuum line, your vacuum line that runs the um, fuel pet cock, and your overflow line. And then you just unscrew where the throttle cable hooks in. comes out. It's probably going to be pretty dirty. You're going to want to clean it up with some carb cleaner before you open it up. Now that we've got the carburetor out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and pull the plate off here on the engine, and the reed should be under there. Once again, it's the 5 millimeter Allen head. Get those four bolts out. You can just go ahead and pull the reed cage out. We're going to replace them. This is the old reed. It's just a thin metal. It's actually two reeds. New reed in there is two piece, a smaller one in the middle on top, and a bigger one on the bottom. So hopefully it gives a better throttle response. We'll see. Okay, once you take the once you take the four screws off the bottom of the carburetor bowl, I've got it upside down now. You can see the main jet. Number is quite hard to read on here. The stock one, I believe, is 92.5. Sure looks like it. The one I got in my kit with the reeds is says 90 on it. So we're going to go ahead and switch that out. Here's the new jet in. Just screws in with a regular screwdriver. And everything looks good in this carburetor. The bowl looks good, so we're just going to go ahead and screw the bowl back on with the four screws here and put it back in. Get the air filter out, it's just two screws up from underneath, one on each side, and it pulls out. Holy cow, is that thing dirty. Here's another thing I'm doing to it. You can see the stock 
exhaust pipe is quite anemic. I mean, just for reference, that's how big the uh, outlet of the pipe is. It also has a drain plug down here. If we run it with this out, it'll be almost double the output from the pipe. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can get away with that. There it is right there. There's four bolts with nuts. You just simply mount that to the handlebar where you want it. We put it right there. That, that part snaps on like that and that's when the kid, if he falls off, it'll come off and kill the engine. So there's two wires with that and a black protective cover. You just want to run them through, zip tie them and run them down here to the front. This is a Suzuki, so we are looking for a black with a white tracer and a black with a yellow tracer. I already have it installed, but you can see there's black with a yellow. So we cut it, black with white. We cut it, wired in our wires. I used heat shrink connectors, crimped them, and heated them, and sealed them up. So that's all you need to do to have a working kill switch. So we'll just screw the cover back down and I'll show you how it works. Okay, it works perfect. These are AC racing, which is pretty popular. Um, Nerf bar for these. And they're relatively easy to put on. They just mount. There's just two mounting bolts for it. Where it mounts is you have to take this out at the end of the foot peg and the one in front of the foot peg, 13 and 14. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. So now we just got to fit it in place, put the bolts back in. I recommend a longer bolt here. My bolt was pretty short. You're going through that much more. Just seems like a good idea to put a little bit longer bolt in. Okay, that's one side in. Same thing on the other side and we'll be ready to race. My only complaint is I don't like that it sticks down so low. Just wish it were a little higher, but I guess it's fine. <laughs> 